I did pause the recording because uh, we were all waiting. Okay, so we're going to go uh, back to where we ended. We stopped with the outer aura um, day before. And so we're going to go into now uh, what we call the patches, the rays or streams, right? And then the uh, further bifurcation of the same by the author. So that's what we're going to look at right now. Uh, to, so quickly to just read there. So it says that there are bright patches, rays and streams have been observed coming out, yes, from various parts of the body. Sometimes they appear and disappear rapidly. That means very quickly. And at times they continue to stay. They continue to linger. They continue to persist. Patches never seem to be colored. Rays are usually colorless. Uh, so the patches seem to be colored. So it has a certain color. Uh, they give you colors a little later. Whereas the rays are usually colorless, though tinted sometimes with different hues. Yes. Uh, where they occur, the aura usually becomes denser, which means it becomes uh, literally kind of, if I can use the word, thicker. Yes. So it, it kind of gets more compact at that point. So they say there are three varieties, right? So the first one, they call it both rays and patches. And after that, they call them more rays, right? So the first one, let's just put it as rays and patches. It's lighter than the surrounding aura. And they say that uh, entirely separates from, but close to the body. So it separates these rays and patches are in certain parts. They are lighter. And the area surrounding that, it tends to be closer to the body, right? Separate and close to the body. Appearing in an in and also envelope again by the aura. So the aura is still around it, around these patches and rays. In most... Uh, How can sorry, it be surrounding and enveloping the aura? Again? Correct. That's what I was trying to ask you. <laughs> uh, this, this particular paragraph was a little perplexing even for me because they talk about it being parallel and then they talk about it going out and extending and kind of disappearing. <laughs> so, unless, so unless this is a fancy word for interpenetrating. Maybe that is one because, because they talk about it in the, uh, in the end saying that it fades into the adjacent aura. Uh, so which I'm not, yeah. Which I'm not sure if it's just the outer aura they're referring to from the inner aura or another person's aura, and so it's probably got to do with the mixing because it's you know like the inner aura is the shape, and they talk about it like having parallel, and then you have the health rays that go this way. So I think they're mixing both. So when you read it, it it is quite confusing because they're talking about it both, being both like this and parallel to the body. Yeah. So our, my assumption, uh, Amit can uh, mention what he thinks, I just is probably the, <laughs> okay, independently. No, I mean, the, the variation that they keep talking about is probably got to do with both the way the inner aura is, uh, you know, the thicker part is closest to the body and then it comes lighter. So it's like layers. So it looks like it's parallel to the body. And the other one is like perpendicular from the body heading out, uh, which is what we call the health race. Yeah. So let me move on. So it says that uh, it envelops the body. Then it goes on to say that in their most common form, they are elongated, yes? Uh, and their long axis is parallel with the body. So here again, it's parallel. And then they go and say that their sides are usually distinct, exactly consonant with the edge of the inner aura. But the ends usually are contracted and less bright, often fade into the adjacent aura. So I'm hoping they mean that, you know, as it goes uh, further out, it becomes much, uh, I mean, the densest part is here, right? So the lighter part is out there and it all, almost feels like it fades out. Now, uh, again here, they're mentioning the inner aura, but later on they say that the inner aura is more definite uh, compared to the, excuse me, compared to the outer aura. So that is a bit uh, unclear here because here he's saying that it suddenly starts to become less bright and fades. Yes. Anyway, so just keeping that in mind. Uh, so the inner aura within the rays usually, but not always, loses its triad's appearance and uh, becomes granular. The longer the rays persist, the coarser becomes the granules. Do you want to talk about that? And I'll go to uh, Yeah, okay. There's not, then I don't know uh, what he's saying. Uh, bright patches, uh, rays or streams have been observed emanating from various parts of the body. So they have not specified what part of the body. It's just different parts of the body. They see these bright. I'm thinking that they're talking about these extensions and they're talking about the ultra long aura or I'm not sure what they're talking about. 
uh, if you guys do, please uh, send it on the uh, message <laughs> because uh, I'm a little confused also. Uh, because um, sometimes the language is very different. So what, right, what we might think is described very differently here. Um, as far as I know, with my interaction with clairvoyance, this has not been noticed. Um, so patches never seem to be colored. Rays are usually, initially I thought these were thought forms, okay? Initially I thought they were thought forms because they kept saying they're patches, they, sometimes they're like this, sometimes like that, occasionally they're with colors, occasionally they're not. So I, 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 I was thinking, are they thought forms and the guy doesn't know about it? So he just... Because or I was people. thinking they were deceased energy, you know, like... like uh, but deceased bombs. energy, I think he would pick up. But I thought know. forms, I don't know whether he would pick up. Okay. Um, because... Um, they say grayish in some cases. No, because they're talking about... Um, colorless and patchy, but disease energy is never colorless patchy, it's always um, grayish. Anyway, um, where they occur, the aura becomes denser, so that could be uh, excess energy, it could be movement of energy, it could be it's just a photograph. So the energy might just be moving excessively from one part to another part, and they click at that point. We don't know what he's talking about. Because like I mentioned, thought forms and most people are not very strong. So they're usually uh, not formed properly and they look like patches, like like a little bit of clouds. Uh, and usually they go for some time and they just dissipate. Um, I gave this example about the newspaper and all, right? That Master Chow talked to us about, guy reading the newspaper. Anyway, rays or patches lighter than the surrounding aura entirely separated from, but close to the body, okay? Uh, appearing in an envelope by the aura itself. So this was, mm, now when they say lighter than the surrounding aura, I don't know what aura they're talking about. Are they talking about which of the three ones is he talking about? The I think it's the inner aura. I think it's the, I don't know if it's the inner aura or the outer aura because he was talking about the outer aura and then he goes into this and then he says just the aura. So I don't know uh, because I was just checking uh, that one is, if you have the book, not the online version, it's page 82 where they talk about outer aura and then straight away in 83 they talk about the patches and then 86 and then 84. Um, so it's continuous from after the inner aura. So that's why I was thinking, is it or, or lighter than surrounding which aura, which part of the aura they have not mentioned. And they're saying in their co most common form, they're elongated, they're long axis parallel with the body. So here this is more talking about health rays, right? Yeah. And their sides are usually distinct, exactly coincident with the edge of the, now they're mentioning inner aura. Um, so exactly coincident, that's why it comes out of the pores of the inner aura, that we know. And, but the ends usually contracted and less bright often fade into the adjacent aura because they plug into the, uh, I'm presuming they're me meant not, the outer end because the outer end will be really bright with the energy coming out and that's what uh, even Arthur Paul has said there's rose color all these colors coming out and when it goes in when it goes in it could be um, you know uh, fading. fading in into the pore and from the pore it just goes it fades into the body into so the aura. you're talking about it going towards the physical body. I was talking about it going outside. No if it was outside energy goes out so it will become brighter but they're looking at if they're talking about fading, it would be definitely inside. Yes. Is it related to entangle? It could be. I was thinking about that. Maybe where it's entangled, they look at it as a patch. Or but they're not co correlated to any disease or anything. That's why I was wondering. You know, I mean, I'm sure this guy is more intelligent enough to notice that, okay, with the entangled one, there might be issue in that part. So there must be something wrong. I'm sure they would have mentioned something like that. Um, and um, also, when they're talking about these, where's the layers you were talking about, right? So in aura within the ray, the in aura within the ray usually, but not always loses its striated appearance. So now they're talking about, because you have to understand that um, I think the health rays, if I'm not mistaken, it goes into the inner aura as well, but not into the etheric body. Because the inner aura, if you remember, extends out of the body five inches, right? So what they're saying here is that the inner aura within the ray, so with, the inner aura within the ray. So when the ray goes through that inner aura, the inner aura is obviously interpenetrating the health rays at that point, but not always loses its striated appearance. So obviously there will be a, uh, it won't be as defined as it is out of the inner aura um, and becomes granular. The longer the ray persists, 
the coarser the granule. I have no idea what that has to do with the grossness of energy. Uh, where were you talking about the layers? You said something about layers? Yeah, for me, that's what I, because I've been talking about. The inner aura has layers. So if you read the chapter, I think it's page 139, but it depends on the uh, edition that you have of Miracles of Pranic Healing, but it's in the intermediate Pranic Healing chapter, Scanning by Fingers. Masachua asks us to scan the layers of the inner aura. So the inner aura has certain layers, and as you develop, these layers increase. And so uh, they have different layers of thickness, okay? So you see, it's very complex. And he is not as described in detail what exactly is happening and why they are talking about this also, I do not know. Because hopefully they will answer this so we can continue. No, actually they don't. They don't. Any, uh, so, I didn't read it. <laughs> yes. So uh, <laughs> granular, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm presuming that as the deceased energy is coming out of those rays, uh, maybe if it's if it's really mucky and dirty, maybe it doesn't look straight. It might look like there's some grains or gran granules inside it. I'm yeah. not too sure. That could be it. And and uh, moving on to the second one. Now the second one uh, is much easier to understand. So they talk about rays emanating from one part of the body and running to another part. Yes, not very distant. These so it's just moving from one part to another. So the example they give you is from the uh, from say for example from the wrist the energy like a bright light going through the palm and coming out of the hand right so they say that this particular ray is very uh it's brilliant right so it means it's it's really uh when you look at it it's very luminous and so the energy that comes out is so brilliant that they say that if you are the person where this energy is coming out from and you touch a patient then that energy can actually be transferred so they say that it can move, but it moves from, say, a point. So it can be this point or this point to another point, but not from surface to surface. So it's not like this whole thing has the energy coming out and therefore you can put it straight into like a patch on, on the patient's body. It's just points. So it's either these points or these points. That's what I understood. All right. So they continue to talk about how you can use it in a local area and uh, you can actually try and help a person get healed. So the last sentence says, such rays of, are formed more easily between points than between surfaces. That's the way I understood it. Now to move on, it says in one instance, a ray from the hand of the person that was coming out was bright yellow, but as it moved out, it started to become like a liquid uh, ruby red color. Now for me as a healer, sometimes we think we need to put a certain color into a patient. But hopefully, because we've invoked, sometimes the color that we are sending, maybe it's supposed to be uh, a green, but we're actually sending a blue. The blue, though, it comes out of our hands, starts to change color uh, based on what is required by the patient. Now, in this case, probably maybe an instance of that that was caught by Dr. Kilner, but maybe it's also something else that he hasn't further explained. Yeah, I'll talk about the third one and then come back. Yeah, we'll... yeah all right. So then the third one, the the third uh, variation they're talking about is rays projecting at right angles from the body into space. Brighter than... Why do you use these words into space and all that stuff? I mean, it's like, seriously. Because they, what is it they call this? They can't call it the universe now. Because they can well, only see... When you say into space, right? I'm imagining like... No, not into They're like massive, there. huge rays that emanate like the sun. Not from... Otherwise, you'd be like, they'd be around the body. They've already said atmosphere. They've said all sorts of things. But now you're going into space. That means I'm like, this guy's rays are like super strong now. They're going, radiating into like, you know, like you can see it from space. <laughs> I know he's talking about space, like as in into more space, but they need to live. But I think it should have been described better. Uh, we'll teach them English later. Okay? Not English. <laughs> of course, maybe they did not they have that kind space. of How that much kind space? Of no, this guy didn't believe until he had sixty patients, right? So at least you he know, honestly, compared to what Doctor Kilner has written, and sometimes I've, re I've read some stuff from other doctors, it's at least a little clearer. It's at it least is. something you and I can understand, right? So I, I still give him credit, even in those days, as a doctor to write like this, so we can understand something, but not all of it. All right, so let's move on. So we're talking about space. <laughs> yeah, and it's only beyond, even sometimes beyond the outer aura. So it's not like that big. It's like, you know, beyond the outer aura, like a meter. So Yeah, but he doesn't think it's a meter. But anyway, come, let's go, let's go on. Okay. So Ray is projecting at right angles from the body into space, close to the body brighter than and as far as or even beyond the outer aura. So these rays 
are obviously sending out, you know, um, uh, the emission is so bright that it can actually be seen coming out of the body and moving even outside the outer aura, which he described earlier. The sides of the ray are usually, though not always parallel, and rod and rarely fan shaped. The ends become pointed and fade away, especially when you when issuing from uh, the tips of the finger. So why is he expecting it to be fan shaped? I why does know. he have to use those words? It's rarely fan shaped. So I mean, like, I mean that means he expects it to be fan shaped. I think maybe because you know the chakra is still rounded, and so when the energy comes out, maybe when he can see the. Why are you using these words? Like I you know, know, it's so weird that you say fan shaped. Like oh, it's rarely fan shaped, but should it have been fan shaped? Why not? I don't know. Maybe in other Spiral observations, shape? maybe other observation he's seen uh, span shape, but that's very rare. He normally sees it just going straight out parallel. Right? So say from the fingers, the chakra is there, it goes like a, you know, it's rounded. So it's either parallel and So it comes shape. out like a, yeah, like a, like a flower, like a funnel, and then becomes pointed probably. That's why he sees the fan shape there. That's my understanding. All right. Now, don't worry. These are just things that we're trying to just understand. They're not as important because you and I know what these uh, various auras are like, what the, what the ray is like. But just to have an understanding of what he's trying to say. We could completely... Just for the record, I've never experienced auras like this. I have known uh, some very good clairvoyants also. And they have never seen anything fan-shaped. Except when you have a fan in your hand. <laughs> and that's not clairvoyance. Anyway. Maybe, uh, you know, in those days he met an Asian. Alright. So he's saying that rays are never being observed other than straight. Yeah. So normally it's straight. So that's why he probably is talking about this rare thing that he's seen as a fan shape. Uh, then normal direction is perpendicular to the body. So that's why I feel if it's my palm, it's perpendicular to the body. So it's coming out like this, straight out. Yeah, perpendicular to the body. And uh, where did I get lost? Yeah. Uh, but they end. may uh, take any direction. For example, uh, when flowing from the tips of the fingers to the other person. Yes. So... From here, it doesn't have to perpendicularly go there. It, you know, it, it, I could still be here and it might still find its way to the path that I intend the energy to go. So what they're saying, is the, the energies that flow from the tips of my fingers if I'm healing doesn't necessarily always go um, you know, straight out. That's what I understood. Now, they move on to the next part, which I'll go really quickly through. They're talking about uh, the kind of aura that he finds in many other things as well. Right. Uh, before that, in addition to the bluish gray aura, red and yellow has been observed uh, in tinge rays. So the rays that they're talking about, the health rays, he usually sees it as a bluish gray uh, kind of uh, rays coming out. But sometimes it has red and yellow coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was usually that pinkish color that comes out. Maybe he thinks pink is reddish yellow. Okay. Red and yellow. Not too sure why so much red and yellow comes out of the aura. I mean, out of the rays. Okay. The fact that their structure resembles that of the inner aura. Which rays they have not mentioned. Where there is one part of the body, various part of the body. See, second rays come from one part of the body and running to another part. Okay. Go ahead. I'll explain this, what I think of this. Okay. It talks about this, and then they give you an example saying that it's coming out like a bright ray that comes through the wrist and the elbow. All right, and then it continues to talk about um, the aura, and they say that the fact that the structure resembles that of the inner aura, and that they have never been observed to diminish uh, and diminish the adjacent outer aura, either in density or brightness justify the conclusion that rays and the inner aura have a common origin, right? So both of them come beyond what he calls the etheric double. Remember, after the etheric double is the inner aura and the uh, pores and the health rays from there come out from that point. So more or less the same. However, he thinks that the point and origin of the outer auras is from a different source. And also he says later on that the force or the energy uh, of both these are different. Anyway, so let me just conclude with this. The uh, sorry, the body, and that therefore a ray is merely an extended bundle of striads of the inner aura. So, in his case, he sees the inner aura and the health aura or the health rays as one, right? Being part of the same part of the body, though he does say uh, many times here 
that the rays go beyond the inner aura. And that's what we understand in Master Joy's uh, Pranic Healing, that the health aura is about two feet, whereas the inner aura is about four to five inches, right? Uh, but here, he, he just says that uh, the, they are merely extensions, right? And, and uh, so that they, therefore, he says a ray is merely an extended bundle of strands of the inner aura. It could be possible, uh, but for understanding, Master Choi has divided it into inner aura, health aura, and outer aura. As such, they are, uh, he doesn't really say that they are actually different, but for better understanding, he has uh, kind of made separations here. And uh, to move on to the last part that I wanted to talk about before I give it to Amit. So he says that, um, you know, when he looks at the aura of different things, he realizes there is a haze or some kind of an aura around other things. Uh, starting with a magnet, then he looks at a magnet and the poles. Uh, he says there's a bluish uh, color, then a yellow aura is around a crystal of uranium. And then he talks about a bluish aura around the poles of galvanic cells. So he realized uranium nitrate. Uranium, uranium is nitrate. Completely oh, different. sorry, uranium nitrate. <laughs> so, I just missed that word because I tried to move to the next. But one. uranium nitrate, I think, is yellow compound anyway. So I mean, it's, oh, anyway. the aura is also yellow according to. It's not okay. an aura. It could just be light, could reflecting. Be light. Okay. Around any conductor using poles. Okay, now you lost me. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so my point is that what we understand in pranic healing is that not just uh, a human or an animal has an aura. But everything, animate and inanimate, have energy or have an aura. Uh, and so that's basically what he has started to see around different things, whether it's a magnet or other things. And this is what he has put together. So first he's divided the aura for us into the etheric aura. He's uh, divided into the inner and outer aura. And he has spoken about rays, but very differently. Uh, the, he does talk about the, the energy being parallel, which is the inner aura. Uh, the striations that he talks about. And then at the same time, he says, if perpendicular, there's another one that comes up, which is what we call as the health race. The outer aura is still not very, very clear. And so the last part, he says that the inner aura has a uh, striate st structure, uh, which the outer aura is entirely nebulous. So that's the egg shape, right? I'm presuming that's why he's calling it that. Uh, it's more circular, so egg shape. The inner aura has a fairly well-marked border, uh, so he's very sure that it ends at four inches or whatever. And the outer aura is ill-defined. Whereas for us, it is not. If it's egg-shaped, there is obviously a shape that kind of concludes its shape. There, there is an end to it as well. The outer aura, sorry, the outer margin of the inner aura is uh, crenated, but the outer aura does not have any, any kind of correspondence. Uh, so they go on to talk later about how the inner aura and the outer aura are very, very different and they really don't affect each other. Uh, and, but we know that it definitely affects each other. So to move on, the, the last point there, that the rays proceed from the inner aura, uh, but in no case has it been observed to commence in the outer aura. So the health rays, they're sure, is only within or starts within the inner aura, definitely doesn't start from the outer aura. That's basically what they're talking about here. And uh, therefore, he concludes in the end, he says, the outer aura is mostly probably derived from the inner aura. <laughs> so he thinks it comes from the inner aura. And then he says the two auras... Not are, derived, not derived. Sorry, the two... Sorry, wait, wait, wait. Outer is most probably... Outer aura is uh, most probably derived... Not derived. I've got it as derived. Uh, oh... Outer is most probably not derived from the inner. Okay, both of us have two different prints here. <laughs> he has a not derived. I Mine's have from it the state, as, so it should be. Mine has <laughs> no, uh, derived. So I'm not too sure. Again, there is an error there. Not derived from Vijay Kumar. Okay. Not derived in Ekta Jain's book. All right, so I presume the ebook has uh, derived. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I'm wondering how come I'm reading that way. Okay, so the outer aura is most probably derived, not derived from the inner aura. There's a completely different meaning. <laughs> it's a complete opposite. <laughs> I don't even understand this chapter. Okay, that the two auras are most probably not the product of one and the same force. Right, so uh, then I presume not derived makes sense. So if, if this is what I was talking about earlier. They're talking about how these two don't come from the same source or force. 
Uh, but for me uh, and you, those of you, especially pranic healers, you realize that it's obviously the same, right? It's all part of what you and I call the energy body or the etheric body. Yeah. But the all two right. auras are, of, okay. All right. So I, I have nothing to much to say, but this is what I think. Okay. This is my, um, what I think is that uh, these rays or patches or what you call it is nothing but energy. I think it's just flow of energy. And the guy is just overthinking it and analyzing it because it's the first time. So he's probably looking at uh, maybe the right hand energy from here to here is a, there's a major, what he's talking about, these are actually major nadis or meridians in the body from the, um, what do you call it? What is this that they're talking about? From the body to an arm, arm to be bent from the armpit to the wrist. These are all major meridian points. Uh, so I would suggest, um, I would think that these are just nadis, but the rays, if you can't see the energy channel, then you can just see the ray going through the energy channel, looking like it's floating over there, but it's not really floating. It's going through a channel. That's why it looks like it's going through a specified path. It's not going through a specified, it is going through a specified path because of the channel. And all these rays coming out of the hands, rays going out in space, the patches coming out of the hand, it's just all energy. Uh, and he's just trying to understand it. So if you look at the advanced book, one of the editions, you have the hand there with just rays coming out and patches coming out. That's what I thought of <laughs> when I was asking for divine guidance. That's the picture that came to me. You remember the advanced pranic killing book by Master Chua? There's a picture of a hand. It's very famous. They use it in a lot of brochures without copyright. Uh, it looks like a fan shape. It's like a fan shape kind of <laughs> thing also. <laughs> so there's a hand and there are patches coming out like globules and then there's rays coming out also. And then if you see certain uh, deities, those are the health rays coming out. But other than that, there are always rays coming out of the hands, beams coming out of the hands. So I think these are just uh, different definitions and study on how the energy comes out of the body. And basically, it's all about energy and the flow of energy coming out of the body. That's what I just think about one, two, three. And about this aura, um, that is interesting information. Um, and about magnetic poles, I have not tried to look at magnetic poles in a nitrate, but uh, they would have obviously is Fleming's right hand rule, right? Or there's a physics rule that there is an energy field, but aura, I don't know. Uh, and from the facts that the inner aura has a striated structure, that is that is possible um, on a certain level of truth. Um, usually, what I understand is it comes down and it breaks into threads. Remember, we spoke about it. And there are lines and lines, so it's usually rectangular shape. So you can look at that striation. And as a person evolves, these striations change in shape and color and everything. So it depends on who they're looking at. Um, and the outer aura is nebulous, and the inner aura has a fairly mild marked border. Outer aura being ill defined, that is true. Uh, the outer aura is not really ill defined as such, it's just because it's so, it's, it's, it's quite less dense. It's, I mean, it's much, it's much less dense than the inner aura. So it's not easy to see where the outer aura ends. But since you could scan, if you've done pranic healing, you can scan the outer aura. And when you scan, it's pretty well defined. It's pretty well defined. So I would not say that it's ill-defined. It does not just disappear, right? What? Huh? I was listening to you. I was saying that the outer aura is saying that uh, the outer aura is ill-defined. I said when you yeah, learn yeah. pranic healing, you scan the outer aura and I can tell you it's pretty well defined and there's, you can see the outer aura, it's quite well defined. Yeah, I did mention. It's quite well defined. Yeah, there are some people uh, with a uh, few kilometers outer aura, you know, huge outer aura. So when you do especially uh, certain breathing exercises and the Tibetan exercise uh, or what we call mental physical exercise, all the exercise, you can see the definition of the outer aura even more clearly. And if you've done pranic psychotherapy or psychic self-defense, we ask you definitely to scan the outer aura and the shield, right? Or the shell that you create in that particular course. Anyway, so, but in this no case has been observed uh, comments in the outer aura and pass through the inner aura. Rays proceed from the inner, but in no case have been observed to comments in the outer aura and pass through the inner aura. Well, no, because the outer aura does not feed the inner aura. The source is from inside, right? The energy. But then, you know, all the air prana comes into your body that way, right? Mm. So if you, anyway. So it's interesting. 
and the two oils are probably not the products of one of the same force. Maybe, I'm not sure because I think they, are, they come from the same source and the same force, but they have different functions. Um, doc, okay, you can go on now. Doctor. All right, so I'm, I'm just going to go to another part because I think it, it gets a little too stretchy right now. Uh, so what I'd like to mention is that they do mention that the state or the health of a person does affect these auras, right? So I'd like to just touch upon that and just go forward. So they say that different states of health, general or local, act on the auras, the inner aura and the outer aura. And so they continue to say that in some cases, remember we are talking about the striation. So the layers, let me just call it layers to make it simpler. They start to reduce when some people are sick. Now, you and I, who are pranic healers, we know, for example, in fever, the number of layers obviously reduce. They can even become as close to the body as possible because a person is unwell, not just in one area, but the whole body is affected. So they do mention that it affects the inner aura, but you and I know that automatically it affects also the outer aura. The outer aura, which is like an egg, other things happen to it, which again affects the energy coming in and out. Uh, so they continue to say that um, when you look at a certain part of the body, depending on the kind of disease that the person has, it could be affecting one portion of the inner aura, both portions of the inner aura, the upper aura, the middle aura, or the lower aura, right? So let me just give you some examples and then quickly uh, go forward again. So they talk about uh, the changes in the aura, right? So in hysteria, they interestingly talk about the outer aura, right? For me, including the inner aura, would be wider around the trunk, yes, and then suddenly kind of contracts or becomes smaller around the pubic. But again, uh, at the back, right, there's a bulge in the lumbar region. So if you notice these two, it's actually the solar plexus. And hysterical patients, you know, they are going to have crazy solar plexus chakras, right? So what he's sensing uh, or what he's seeing in this case is true with reference to our scanning ability in pranic healing. And then they go on to talk about another case. Uh, here he talks about epilepsy. In this case, he says only one side, right? Uh, and so one side of the outer aura, in this case, I would also say the inner aura is affected compared to the other. And the color in this case, he says, is, is grayish. So we need to basically remove this energy from that, balance both sides, and the patient should start to slowly recover. So uh, it moves on, I'm in this, uh, in my thing, it's the second last paragraph. It says, the inner aura does not alter in shape or size to a great extent, but it changes considerably in texture. Whereas in, in my personal experience and in Master Cho's book, that's not the case. It does change, it can change considerably. It can change when you meditate, it can change when you have fever, it can change when you get angry. You may not be hysterical at that point, but it, it does definitely change the inner aura and the texture, of course, accordingly, whether I'm having fever, whether I'm just emotionally upset or I'm doing a meditation, the quality of energy in my inner aura will definitely change. And the outer, air, outer aura var varies more frequently and more extensively in shape and size, but almost imperceptibly in te texture. Uh, now, in the outer aura, we really don't talk about so much about the energy within it. We only talk about the shell. And the shell definitely gets affected whether you have fever, uh, whether you are emotional, it does get affected. Hopefully, when you've done your meditation, it's going to be nice and uh, smooth with no issues on the surface. Yeah. So uh, to end, I will just say, in the case of disease, the earliest morbid symptom is diminution or less uh, number of striations. So basically trying to say that, like I said, the inner aura becomes uh, smaller. And the granules, if I'm talking about the rays, there, of course, it's going to get clogged up, right? And so maybe as those, uh, you know, you've got to look at it like little pipes. And if those pipes are going to get clogged, then energy from inside, which is disease, which is supposed to go, doesn't have the ability to go, causing further ill health in our body. And that's why, for example, in our case, we general sweeping is so important for chronic cases. And so since it cannot work like this, right? They're supposed to be smooth, like rays going out. They start getting affected and then they get entangled and they start drooping when, when the person really, really gets really unwell. Yeah. So that's my bit, and then I'll hand it over to Amit before, uh, hopefully we'll try and conclude today. 
Please, let's finish this chapter. I'm There's one. <laughs> Hopefully we can. Um, all right. So uh, the local infection, affection may cause all the stride to disappear, different state of blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, uh, may cause the disease from the inner, the latter becoming more opaque and dense and changing its color. I just thought she said that it doesn't change in shape. Huh? Huh? Anyway, it becomes more opaque and dense. Okay, now a local affection, that means a local issue, like your pain here. A local or, area. A local area, locally affected area. Um, may cause okay the 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 stride to disappear, so you don't see clear uh, defining uh, layers because it's dirty. All right, so it's like clear water and muddy water. You don't see the layers anymore. Okay, if you have clear water, you can see everything in the water. But if it's not, if it's opaque, if it's if it's dirty, it's getting congested. Then you can't see the layers anymore. Um, all the areas to disappear from the inora and the latter becoming more opaque and dense and changing its color. This in my idea is congested energy because it's becoming opaque, it's becoming dense in that area. So it's causing, um, 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 what do you call, stagnation of energy, all right? It may also appear roughly red. So that in my view is the, since the energy flow in the body is becoming less, the energy going out of the health rays. You have to understand the health rays are not nadis, it's energy shooting out, right? Uh, it's, it's pressurized water. Now, obviously, if the energy in your system is less, the pressurized water will start to reduce. The pressure of the water will start to reduce. There are blocks in the piping. The water pressure will reduce, so it starts to look rough and, in, and then eventually entangles. Uh, and in a manner quite different from the fine striae of health. So when it's healthy, it's straight and you know strong. And when it's not healthy, it droops. Master Cho gave a very... Um, Anyway, it's a, it's not a, it's a PG-15 joke, so I can't give it on. <laughs> uh, we're all adults now. But I don't know, PG-16. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but you will never forget about the health rays again when you hear it. Um, but, um, or it may form a space devoid of the inner aura. In that is depletion, right? So when you have a space where it's devoid or there is yeah. less in aura, is depletion. When you have a space where the latter is becoming more opaque and dense, is congestion. And when you have the uh, when when it's roughly red, that is the health rays. Okay, the uh, an affection over the large portion of the body may make the in aura narrower on one side of the body than the other. This is accompanied by the uh, altercation of texture in the in aura and also the color. So. This has been explained many times, even in the book, of Miracles of Pranicing by Master Chua. I would have put the quotes, but my laptop is still not working, so I can't make presentation. <laughs> so, um, like, you remember he was talking about if a person's left side of the body is affected, um, this area, when you scan, it'll be depleted, and this part would be normal, right? So there's less energy on one side and more energy on the other side. Actually, the other side is normal, and this has less energy. And there's a difference. And since the circulation of prana is affected, the color, the opacity, the, the subtleness of the energy body in that area, and also sometimes the whole body would be affected, depending on which area is affected. Okay? Just like for the heart, sometimes you scan one area of the heart, it's a different level of energy than the other. So they talk about, I think, energy balance. And then you go into the variations of the outer aura, inconsequent, blah, 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 uh, less, blah, blah, blah. The width may contract, but not quite disappear. The color may change. All right. Um, the why is it contracting the width because of the holes? Because energy is leaking out like a depleted balloon. That's what I think. Uh, a change over a large area of the body may completely alter the shape of the outer aura. The outer aura, da, 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 da. changes in the aura may be produced by disease. In hysteria, that means when a person is hysterical, in from the pranic killing side, uh, pranic killing point of view, the basic, the solar plexus, the ming main. Um, the back heart and the ajna and the throat are the main ones affected for hysteria, sometimes the sex chakra uh, and the crown chakra. Uh, now, what does it say here? The outer aura is wider at the sides of the trunk. Um, that is because of the energy coming out of the solar plexus and the energy coming out of that area. So it might be wider in that area. All right. And its width suddenly contracts near the pubic area and a bulge at the back of the lumbar region. That is very, very... Um, that, that is quite accurate, actually. 
the energy usually goes from the back, uh, usually the Ming main basic. That's why they have the hysteria, you know, the basic is affected, the Ming main is affected. Um, if they're not hysterical, then they'll just be sitting and keeping quiet. Then it's just the solar plexus, the agne, the throat, the upper ones. But if they're hysterical, it usually implies action. And if you learn pratic healing, action implies um, the basic. And if it affects the basic, it'll affect the sex chakra. So, and, and, also the, and, the, and also the main, main. definitely. They're, they're, they're very hysterical. They start throwing things and stuff like that. Uh, so that is usually um, the... That is what they're doing. Uh, and the reason it's wider at the sides is because of the energy leaking out of the solar plexus, which seems like it's wider, but it's not really wider. Uh, not in a good way. Okay. Anyway, all this information is good, but the method to clean them, irrespective of all this, is similar. So, um, and epilepsy and then contraction of the inner in very implies a gray malady. Occasionally, an absolute break in the aura is observed. I don't know whether that's holes or severe depletion. But then the next paragraph it says, but the aura in aura does not alter in shape or size. How can you have uh, a break in the inner aura without a shape? Uh, how change. can a change in shape or size? How is that possible? I don't understand. But it changes considerably in texture. The outer aura varies more frequently and more extensively in the shape. Wait, what page is it from? 223, 227, 228. So it's a similar page. So it's not. Sometimes I thought he'd just take it from one page and then it's unrelated. In that case, it could be gross versus subtle or, you know, refined. Um, in case of disease, the earliest morbid symptom is diminished loss of striation. Um, Together with this, uh, the granules becoming coarser, and this apparently becomes a magnetism. Blah, 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 blah. So the main form of disease is basically what they're trying to say in another way, is that the disease first appears, uh, the earliest symptom is in energy form. So again, this guy, Dr. Uh, Kilner, is again saying that disease appears in the energy body before it appears on the physical body. Now that is good information. <laughs> Because there's another person who's validating what I'm saying. Because they're saying in the case of disease, the earliest morbid symptom is dimi this diminution or complete loss of striation. So if you lose the layers of the uh, inner aura, that means the inner aura is not very clean. It's starting to get dirty. So there's going to be an issue there. And that's what he's trying to say. Okay, you can go ahead. Yeah. All right. Hopefully I'll finish. And I'll say what she said. Ditto. <laughs> All right. So let's try and uh, end this really quickly um, so the next part we're basically talking about the colors right uh, so they talk about the colors that uh, dr kellner could also see around a person who is more uh, mental right so who's more of an intellectual the colors around that person is more bluish and even in pranic healing and many of the others they do talk and they mention that uh, when you find someone who's more mental, at, uh, even at the point of reading, for, for example, maybe even all our auras at this point would have more of a bluish tinge around here while we're trying to study and make sense, right? So that's, that's normal from what Clairvoyant say and what he's also saying. And uh, then he mentions that uh, the rays, right, that you can project. He says, normally it's, it's easiest to project blue, but there are other colors. Uh, for example, red and yellow is another color. But they find that producing this red and yellow through the, through the aspect of will is a little bit more difficult. And uh, what we are all trying to do at this point, why are we talking about Dr. Kellner at this, at this juncture, is all this while, all the people we're talking about have basically used their clairvoyant observation to try and see what's actually happening to the aura. Right, whether it's the absorption of the prana coming from the sun, how is that prana further distributed within the system? How is it broken down? Where does it go? All this has been more uh, clairvoyant observation. And so it's nice for them, I think, at that point to have a doctor saying, you know, there is some similarity between clairvoyant vision of what they've seen in the various aspects, uh, the components like the inner aura, the outer aura, the colors, the hues. Uh, and having it validated by his experiments. And so that's basically what they're talking about at this end. And they say it's really nice to have this because uh, Dr. Kellner's terms of the etheric double are very, very similar to what the clairvoyants also term. The uh, various uh, bifurcations that he gives with reference to the aura, right, uh, including what we're talking about, the inner aura, 
is the same as what we call in, in the book as the health aura. And they continue to say that uh, his explanation has further helped us because you know, uh, the understanding of, uh, let me just go to the next line. So it says that it, it would appear legitimate to summarize that further improvement of Dr. Kellner's method would lead to the physical perception of not just what we were talking about, but also etheric chakrams or chakras, the flow of prana into and through the body. Uh, remember, Amit was saying there are nadis, so he doesn't call it nadis, but we know that through his experiments, there is obviously energy moving through the physical dense body. The nature and structure of the etheric double within the body, yes, uh, and uh, so the concept of the aura. And Dr. Kellner, having referred to the difficulty of perceiving the aura against uh, a background of flesh. So we know that he needed to use certain backgrounds to be able to see that. Uh, and, and kind of actually make notes scientifically that this is what he can see. Clairvoyant probably doesn't need that, uh, who has her, her vision or his vision already open. Uh, but for people like you and I who are starting, the background definitely continues to help us to awaken our, uh, our clairvoyance. Right? And uh, then it moves on to say that, uh, yes, uh, Kellner states that, uh, what he has been able to investigate with reference to the aura uh, is definitely something uh, that he's, he says is good for diagnosis. But he says uh, further investigation should definitely be done uh, because even if you can't prove it at this point, it's definitely going to be interesting for the scientific community. So that would be something uh, that he definitely suggests we continue to investigate scientifically, uh, not just with clairvoyance, right? And so to end, um, I'm going to the last paragraph from the observed fact, one, that ill health de de deranges the aura, which we and I know it affects the aura, the etheric matter of the adjacent auras flow together, forming rays. So we know where exactly the rays come out from. And such rays can be formed and directed by an effort of the will. We're talking about the rays coming out of the hands to do healing. So and I was right, sort of. Okay. Um, that the will will be deter will determine even the color, right? So whether it's blue, red, or uh, yellow, as they put, uh, that can come out uh, from the hand, uh, appear but a very short step to the subject of magnetic and mesmeric healing. So the, the types of healings he's mentioned here, and then it ends by saying, and it is to be hoped that some investigation will make the study of this important and interesting subject in the same painstaking manner that has characterized Dr. Kellner's own research. So uh, hopefully with all the research that's been going on uh, in different parts of the globe, not just by the Pranic Healing School, but many schools, uh, especially in, in Russia and many places, they don't talk about it, but uh, energy uh, research is definitely on in a big way. Yeah. So with that, I conclude the 21st chapter. Let's help Amit finish it as well. And then we can go to the next one on Friday. <laughs> the color of the main range appears. Okay. <laughs> the greater the mental vigor of the bluer the aura becomes, deficiency of mental power leads to grayness in the aura. We've already explained this earlier uh, because it's not gray. It's just that it's not activated. And when they talk about the bluish one, usually, obviously, for those who've done pranic healing, advanced pranic healing, you know, that's the throat, which corresponds to the lower concrete, concrete mines. So in those days, that would be good enough, but it doesn't mean that it's higher abstract or abstract mind is activated. It just means the person is good with details, following instructions, calculations, accounting. So <clears throat> mental, they're talking about, I think lower mental here. It's not, uh, it's not specified. All right. Um, now you, have, you need to understand that they're talking about the red, yellow, blue colors have been produced in this way. Blue was found easiest and all that stuff. Um, um, the Dr. Killer has not studied the chakras. He's not studied the meridians. He's not studied all of this. He just studied the aura. So all these rays and all that he's talking about, that's why I sense that he's talking about energy. He's talking about energy coming and going out because he's not been able to detect the chakras or at least he's not written about it. I've not read the book that he's written. Uh, he's not able to detect the uh, chakras. He's not able to detect the meridians. So obviously for him, if that's invisible and he just sees the production or the produce or the or the effect of the chakras and the meridians then he'll just be able to document that 
right? So because of the not knowing about the chakras, projecting colors is very, very difficult because those of you doing advanced body healing, you know that it's very easy to produce project colors. You just use the uh, predominant color uh, by intention, change the color of the chakra and pass white light through it and it changes color. So it's very simple. Uh, but of course, in 1925, before the technique was revealed, it's very complicated. If I was reading this book, I would have no idea even how to produce blue. Um, so, um, and then prana withdrawn from other etheric matters, discharged from the body. The student would compare the outlines of the aura. Okay, so that's good. Sumi so spoken about this. Yeah, so study of this aura would lead to etheric chakrams flow of prana. Why? Because you're going to eventually think, where are these rays coming from? Where are these patches coming from? Where is all this coming from? And when you start investigating this, that's how science starts, right? They look at the effect and they reverse, <laughs> they try and find the cause. That's the thing with the disease. That's the thing with everything. So studying the aura, studying the rays, studying the patches will lead you to the nadis, will lead you to the chakras. This is just a guess. Um, and Dr. Kilner says that one objective in making his investigation has been to utilize the aura as a means of diagnosis. Wow. So a hundred years later, we are doing that sort of kind of, <laughs> as, a, as an energetic diagnosis, at least we're able to detect subtle changes in the aura using our hand and uh, figure out what part of the body uh, is not getting enough uh, energy and therefore uh, is not able to sustain itself. So disease has manifested in that area or due to that area. Um, from the observed facts that hill health ranges and aura, yes, we know that, etheric matter of adjacent auras flows together, forming rays. So here they're talking about the rays and coinciding it as energy, what, what we were uh, hypothesizing or speculating earlier before, and that such rays can be formed and directed by a will. So now he's really calling that rays, so more convinced. And uh, this will lead to mesmeric healing and hopefully someone will study it. Master Chua studied it in depth and now he has made it very easy for us to understand. Yes, and I think from that time when Dr. Kellner, sorry, Kellner did it maybe in 1920, whatever, uh, you've got to remember that today we have a GDV camera, we have Krillian photography, all come from, coming from Russia. So that came in 1939, said, I think, Krillian. That's the first one, but the GDV and other things that we have now, uh, 1939, uh, David uh, Samyanovin Davidovich Krillian. Okay. Davidovich He's the one who started, and that's why it's called Krillian Photography. They have done a lot of research. I think there's still a lot, uh, but to help bridge that uh, gap between the medical and the energy, uh, only these scientific uh, investigations by doctors and, and uh, scientists can actually help. Because us going and doing anything, they're just going to call it hocus pocus. Yeah, so that's why uh, even here we're starting to do more research to help with uh, the work, right? Uh, so investigation has uh, continued, uh, Balachandra, yeah? Shall we end? Yes, uh, <laughs> any questions? I hope it was a very blue... <laughs> My aura <mental> is blue. <laughs> ...mental session for you. I can't imagine how you all sat through listening to us, but anyway... <laughs> Congratulations, you sat through chapter number 21. Hopefully well, the others, uh, though, are longer. Uh, we'll try yeah, it should be. It's called etheric faculties. So yeah. I'm sure there must be some... If, if it's a lot of fun, we'll keep it, uh, you know, like we've done earlier. But if it's going to be too much, like I summarized <laughs> the last page, I'll just summarize it for you and then we'll just jump ahead to get into more, something more interesting. Yeah? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, sure. All right. Thank you, Rupa. You're very kind. <laughs> you said you still enjoyed it, yeah? Okay, people. Now, um, I'm, I'm going to check, uh, since we are doing these online sessions, all online sessions, uh, free or not, uh, has to go through the CRM. So that's something I need to figure out uh, and see how you and I can uh, use the CRM. I think most of you would be on the CRM, except for non-pranic healers. So it should be easy for you. I'm going to just figure out how we can all get on to that. We're almost done with the book. Huh? Leave it. It's so 23, much 24, happened. 25. Yeah. Three 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 three. Three. Anyway, let me just yeah, check. Yeah, you yeah. see, uh, the problem is, I'm, I'm for world pranic healing. If I don't do it, then they're going to say, Sumi doesn't do it. It's technically not it? a pranic healing uh, talk. It's a, a talk yeah, to the universe, a to session. the space. All right. The point being that all uh, nurturing sessions uh, will have to be on the CRM from the 15th of August. 
right? So that's basically why I'm mentioning this to you. So let me find out how we can get this done uh, so it becomes easier for you. So it'll just be one time um, because we're going to easily go into September. So at least another six weeks, we're going to be together uh, so three times me. in a week. <laughs> the yes. last three chapters are a little long. I was thinking we're almost done, <laughs> but no, we're not done. So right. the, the days of two, day, two page, three page chapters are gone. We're back to... Uh, long chapters. <gasps> Balachandra, no mental astral solar system. They're not this year. Not me. <laughs> we'll take a break. <laughs> oh, I, I'm waiting actually... for this book to end. <laughs> Correct. I, I've done the solar system with a group a uh, long time ago. I don't know if anybody here was part of that group. Uh, but I remember sitting through it. But luckily in those days we had breaks, you know, like here right now we don't have any breaks. Master Cho's new book would come, you know, suddenly Omani Padme Home book. And then we would put the solar system aside and start reading Master Cho's book for like a couple of weeks. Then uh, we would continue solar system. And then again, the next book would come. It would be Spiritual Essence of Man. We get all excited, start reading that book. You know, but here we don't have a break. <laughs> so we have about 35 if, pages left. And we right? move at a space of two pages per day, per session. Two and and there was a time three. that I was reading so, all these esoteric books for a, for a very, very long time. And I needed a break. And that's when, luckily for me, Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings came. And then I went into those series, took a break from, uh, you know, proper energy work. There was there some stuff there, but uh, it was interesting to take a break. And I understand why, for example, Master Chua needed to do certain other things. Uh, certain other acharyas like to go and watch movies. Other people need to go and indulge in food because you really need a break. <laughs> yes. Um, I understand Sri Ram is also going to be starting another study session very soon. So uh, that will be on Thursdays. So you would... <laughs> good luck with that know. book. I heard it's Initiation, initiation Human and Soda. Human and Soda. All right. No, it's good. So um, I think it's important to try and go uh, through different uh, people who are teaching, uh, different books that they are uh, studying with you. It would help you also have a greater grasp. But see to it that you do take a break, yeah? Uh, so maybe September might be still tough. It might be four days a week for some of you if you're doing Sri Ram session as well. And um, hopefully post that, it will be only Sri Rams and other people. We'll take a break and uh, we'll meet you after some time. Yeah. Yes, tomorrow, uh, Arhatik Yogis, we meet uh, at 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow's meditation is the Arhatik Kundalini. So if you can do the Kundalini, oh, yeah. do join. Uh, so that, and then Friday, we'll have again 8 o'clock Oh, Yeah. Cool. So that's, that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, so let's end with a short prayer. Thank you for all your patience with us. So I know again. So Dhyana Kundalini tomorrow. Kundalini tomorrow, Deepa. Oh, they Kundalini. changed it. So basically the point being, uh, I think Amit was mentioning and certain other people were mentioning, is that the Kundalini helps uh, to get all the garbage out of our system, right? Our own thoughts, inner our noises. own feelings, our inner noises, and also from outside. Now, we are not meeting that many people, but the egregore of the pandemic is, is definitely widespread, right? So whether you're staying in a contained zone in a city that's affected, it doesn't matter. The egregore over the earth itself is quite strong. And so to avoid us from you know, getting into that, it's a good thing to do the Kundalini to remove all this and also our ancient seeds. And then the next day would be Dhyan, so you can actually enjoy the bliss and the stillness because there's, no, there's not much noise compared to the day before. So that's the logic be behind doing Kundalini and then Dhyan for now. We see so much garbage on TV. I don't even watch TV. I just watch uh, Netflix or Prime. Yeah, it was Deepa. It was Dhyan earlier, yeah. but then we, we've, we've moved it uh, based on this understanding. Yeah. Okay, let's put our hands together. Thank you, people. We'll meet you on Friday. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Master Chok, Oxfilad Maha Guruji Melik. To all the great ones, especially of knowledge and wisdom, to all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the angels of communication, to our soul and divine self, we thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your guidance, for your tremendous patience with us, with your presence, helping us to get greater, clearer understanding of these teachings, helping us absorb this, not fall asleep, and use it to become better instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Atma Namaste, everybody. Enjoy your evening. Uh, Arhatik Yogis, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, if you want to know about the CRM, please contact your local foundation. Uh, they'll, they'll talk to you about it. Yeah. The so you, you will have to be part of some Pranic Healing Prana. Foundation, the official Pranic Healing Foundations, and through them you can join the, the CRM. We'll figure out how we... Don't worry, next session is 
on this is still on Zoom on the on No, it'll all be on Zoom. It's just yeah, that the registration will be anything. different. Yeah. So I just need this to figure week. out how that works for you. Yeah. So I think most of you uh, for me are Arhatik Yogi. So you're already on this CRM. You just have to go and probably, I don't know, add a click on. Yes. And say, okay, we're done. We're here as well. Yeah. Thank you, people. Enjoy. Have a great, great dinner. Bon Bye. appetit. Where are you? Wherever you are from. And we'll see you on Friday. Chapter 22. <laughs> <laughs> 22. Okay, bye. bye. I'm going crazy. I think too much of stuff in the head. Bye. Yeah. Atma Namaste. Enjoy. Okay, bye. Ending for all.